Well, hello, my name is Byron Paulus, and I'm blessed to serve as the CEO and Executive Director of Life Action Ministries, a ministry that's been dedicated for a revival for almost 50 years. And I just wanted to come to you today and say my burden, my passion for revival is greater now than it ever has been in my personal 45 years of being involved in a revival ministry. And I believe that there's one verse that's been burning in my heart, especially since this epidemic. It is Hosea chapter 10 and verse 12. Hosea was a prophet for his time. And he knew he was addressing God's people, a group of people who were very familiar with the ways of God, but no longer walking in the ways of God. And how that depicts, it's a picture, isn't it, today, of the way the church over the last decade and beyond has been very familiar, the church in America especially, with the ways of God, but not walking in the ways of God. And there in chapter 10 and verse 12, Hosea gives what I think is a, a, a declaration of the need of the moment in his day that is replicated and represents today. And he says this, sow in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up that fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and rains righteousness upon you. And I think it's so powerfully important to realize that who Jose is addressing is not the lost world, not all the politicians out there today, not all the secularists, not those who don't know or claim the name of God, but those who are believers because God always begins revival with his people. It's revive us again that thy people might rejoice in thee. Revive thy work in the midst of the years, if my people who are called by my name. So today, in the midst of whatever it is that God is saying, the one thing we know, that if God is gonna send revival, he wants his church. He wants his people, above everything else, he wants his people to be listening intently to what it is that he is trying to do, and that is to revive his church, his people. But then he also says, so in righteousness, Man, that made me think of that passage there in Psalm, I think it's chapter 85, maybe verse 12 or 13, where it says, righteousness goes before him and sets us in the way of his steps. Think about that one, that actually when we begin living out righteously what God expects um, as his people, that that paves, it builds a highway for God to come that righteousness actually precedes the presence of God. And so now is the time for his church to start living righteously, to start obeying God with all of their hearts. And then he says, sow in righteousness, but reap in mercy. That word means in the Old Testament, unfailing love, that we should be reaping whatever comes our way with a heart of mercy. Why? Because God gives mercy where he sees his people extending mercy. After being in over 7,000 churches as an organization in these past almost 50 years, if there's one thing our revivalists would say, it is that the greatest need in the church of Jesus Christ is forgiveness. To be able to forgive, to let go of their bitterness, to let go of their of their hatred and their disagreements and the unresolved conflicts and to fully forgive. Why? Because God gives mercy where he sees mercy being activated in forgiveness. And then he says, sow in righteousness, reap in mercy, but break up your fallow ground. Man, I read that. I grew up on a farm and I just want to tell, I, I, I remember what fallow ground is. It's not ground that was never plowed. It's ground that was plowed at one point, but then neglected and never given attention to, never given an opportunity for harvest. And what a picture in that social, uh, agricultural, economic time of Hosea. What a picture that in many Christians' lives in the church, there's fallow ground, ground that was plowed up when we came to Christ, but then neglected, never tilled, never cultivated, never given an opportunity for a harvest. And I read that phrase in that prayer of Hosea and that declaration of his, and I just think of myself how we need to go to the back 40 of our Christian lives and we need to plow up that ground that is unsurrendered. 
Oh, that God's people, like Hosea knew in his heart, would first of all begin obeying. Secondly, they would forgive. Thirdly, that they would be fully surrendered, nothing unattended to in their lives. And then finally, he makes it so, so obvious. Now is the time. It is time to seek the Lord. And if there's ever been a time right now in the church of Jesus Christ that we need to be seeking him because there are no other solutions, there's no way we can manufacture, we can make happen what needs to happen today. Our only hope is a divine intervention of heaven. Hosea knew that in his day. And that's why he says it's time to seek the Lord. For how long? Until he comes in great power and he restores a representation of himself in the church of Jesus Christ today. Hey folks, I want you to know my heart cry and increasingly the heart cry of Christian leaders all across this nation and intercessors as we're seeing a resurgence of prayer in the heart of the church today is the same as Hosea's cry. It is time to seek the Lord. But until we begin obeying, until we begin forgiving and letting go and extending mercy, because you know, as Matthew Henry said, when God intends great mercy upon his people, he first sets them to pray. So when we obey, when we extend mercy and forgive, and when we are fully 100% surrendered, and then in God context, we express our heart cry in seeking the Lord, I believe. He will come, he will intervene, and he will descend in tabernacle with his people once again, resulting in spiritual awakening and cultural transformation, a true advancement of the kingdom of God around the world. Lord, I pray for all those hearing my voice, but Lord, more importantly, for the millions that are listening to your voice right now during these times, that God, we will begin to obey. We would restore relationships and forgive because you long for unity and oneness. And Lord, that we truly, truly would be fully surrendered to your will and then seek you and believe you to come in great power, in revival, spiritual awakening, changing the world around us. We pray this in the powerful, reviving name of Jesus Christ. Amen.